Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Church Online. Uh, so good to be back with you again. And um, I don't know what's happening in your world right now, but um, pray it's a good season for you. Pray things are going really well. Here at Equipers Church, we feel like we're in an exciting season. We feel like there are uh, great things on the horizon, things we are building towards, um, things we're excited about. Um, a few weeks ago now, we had an amazing For Her conference where the ladies came together and just had a great party and God was there and great things happened. And I know you've been told from time to time about different things that are happening. Our Shout conference coming up. Um, at the end of July and uh, Bible college starting later in the year. But I just want to add my encouragement to all of you, wherever you're watching from, that you're invited to. We'd love to see you. The invitation goes out. And uh, so we'd love you to consider that for a moment. All right, we're going to go to the book of First Chronicles today. And I'm just going to tell you a really cool story that I think is going to inspire you. And it starts in chapter 17 and verse 1 to verse 2. And it says this, when David was settled in his palace, he summoned Nathan the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of the Lord's covenant is out there under a tent. So I want you to picture it for a moment. Here's the amazing uh, King David. He's a wealthy man at this point, and he's living in luxury. He's living in splendor. He has everything that he wants. All his needs are taken care of. And one day, I guess, in a moment of meditation, he looks out of his window and he reflects upon the fact that God's presence on the earth was living in a tent. And uh, David, in a way, looks at himself and thinks, hang on a second, I'm living in a palace, but God, you're living in a tent here on the earth. And uh, it goes on in verse 4, it says this, uh, this is what Nathan is now to go to say to David. It says, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord has declared. You are not the one to build a house for me to live in. I have never lived in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until this very day. My home has always been a tent. Um, moving from here, from one place to another in a tabernacle. Yet no matter where I have gone with the Israelites, I have never once complained to Israel's leaders, the shepherds of my people. I have never asked them, why haven't you built me a beautiful cedar home? And so David's looking out and thinking, man, I want to build uh, a proper place for God to live in. And God kind of responds and says, well, look, Number one, I didn't ask you to build it. And, and secondly, I've never complained about it. And actually, David, because of the history of your life, which involves a lot of fighting, it involved a lot of bloodshed, he says, David, you are not going to be the one to build me a house. And he goes on to explain it is David's son who will build him a house or a temple to live in. And it goes on in verse 10, it says this, um, uh, making a promise to David. He says, I will defeat all of your enemy, enemies. Furthermore, I declare that the Lord will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings. For when you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple to me, and I will secure his throne forevermore. And so uh, here, here's, here's the deal. David's looking out. He wants to build God a house. God says, no, you're not going to do it. Solomon's going to do it. And he says, but let me tell you something, David, because of this desire that you have to look after my house, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to build your house. I'm going to build your house. And today I want to talk about building the house of God because there's this simple but absolutely profound idea in the Bible that when we put the things of God first, when we put God and our relationship with Him first, and when we put His kingdom first, and when we put His house first, that God actually comes and takes care of us. How cool is that? When we put God first, He actually comes and looks after all the details 
of our lives. And, uh, you know, I just want to say, uh, um, as, a, as a man uh, living here on this earth, uh, having lived in such a way that for many years, the house of God and, and, and the temple, not the temple, the, the things of God and the kingdom of God have been at the forefront of my mind and my desires for many years before I was a pastor, by the way, uh, as well as after, as I have done that, that actually that has been the reality in my life. God has taken care of, of really all the other stuff. And he's been good enough uh, to have blessed me with um, an amazing wife. And he's been good enough to have blessed me with four incredible children who are all healthy. And he's been good enough to uh, give me provisions to live from uh, where I don't need to worry about money. And he's been good enough to take care of things that are important uh, like holidays and leisure time and enjoying Life, and he's been good enough to look after um, my mental health. He's been good enough to build so many areas of my life as I have focused on and made the priority of my life all about him. And in a way, in this season we're in, where we are maybe not officially post pandemic, but we are de definitely well on the way in coming out of it. Uh, you know, we are now in a, in a time when really most, if not all, restrictions are gone and isolation is gone. And we're in a new season, uh, both in the natural and uh, in what's been happening in the world. I, I, I want to encourage you that maybe now is the time for us to really rise and to build what God is doing here on the earth. You know, the truth is God is a builder. God is a builder. Um, you think about it for a moment. God built the earth in which we live. He built it. He didn't just sneeze and it happened. He formed it. He made it. He brought the components together to actually make this earth what it is. Um, he is still building the universe. You know, according to uh, really every scientist who understands this, the universe is expanding. The universe isn't getting smaller. The universe is growing and getting bigger. And so who's behind that? Well, that's God. He's, he's building the universe right now. Uh, you might not realize this, but he built you. He actually made you. The Bible says he formed you in your mother's womb. You're not an accident. You weren't thrown together. You weren't just a mistake that happened. God has been building you and he wants to continue to build your life. Here's what it says in Matthew 18, uh, verse, uh, Matthew 16, verse 18. It says this, And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, watch this, I will build my church. I will build my church. And so Jesus is declaring to Peter on the revelation that he had just had, that Jesus is the Messiah. He says, on this revelation, I will build my church. And so in a New Testament context, God is interested in building his church. Building a church that is a house of prayer. Building a church that is a house of salvation. Uh, building a church that is a house of miracles. And uh, sometimes we think, well, are miracles happening? Absolutely all the time, every week, every time something happens in your life or my life that cannot be explained by how you made it happen, probably that was God in the middle of it forming it. That's miraculous. When God gets involved, it's miraculous. You know, a house of breakthrough, a house of healing and deliverance, a house of equipping and training. And my question to you this morning is, will you come and be part of a body of people who are actively building what God is building. Or let me put it like this, getting involved in what God is already doing. God is working. God is moving. And you and I get the privilege of partnering with Him to do what He is doing on the earth. How cool is that? I don't know about you, but I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that. Here's what it says in, in Matthew 6, verse 33, well-known scripture. It says, seek first the kingdom of God above all else, live righteously, 
and he will give you everything you need. Seek first. So I love this. The Bible, the Bible says, here's how we're to live our lives. You've maybe read this scripture a thousand times, but let's focus for a moment. Seek first the kingdom of God. Not seek your career first. Not seek a lifestyle first. Not seek a partner first. Not seek your family first. But seek first the kingdom of God. And we as the body of Christ are part of God's expression of the kingdom on the earth. And if we'll do that, if we'll place priority on the things that God tells us to do, then he says, I've got great news for you. I will take care of all of the rest. That's, a, that's an amazing statement. When you put, let me put it like this, when you put as the first priority in your life, uh, or, or let me put it like this, when you put into first, the, the most important things as number one priority, then God says, I'll give you the things that are second priority and add them to you. I'll say it again, when, when you give God, or when you put into first place in your life, the top priority, which is his kingdom, he says, I'll take the second place things, all the other stuff, which is really important, by the way, and I'll add that to you. But no, it doesn't say vice versa. It doesn't say if, if, if you'll like put the kingdom second and, and you put all the other stuff first, I'll add the kingdom to what you've been going after. No, not necessarily. In fact, we can end up with neither. If we don't put the kingdom first, we don't end up with that and we don't get the other stuff either. But when we put God's stuff first, he says you don't need to worry about the other stuff. I'm going to give that to you. And I want to tell you, it's my testimony, my experience in life in my 25 or 27 years of adulthood, that as I have lived according to this way, that that is exactly what I have seen. God's taking care of the other stuff. God's taking care of it. He's taking care of the relationships. He's taking care of the finances. And, and he's taking care of my health. And he's taking care of relationships. He's taking care of all the stuff that is really important. But it first of all comes out of a place of prioritizing the things of God. His kingdom. His church. Which he's going to return for, by the way. So let me give you a couple of thoughts this morning about what this means. Number one, number one, building or serving God's house comes out of a thankful heart. It comes out of a thankful heart. So, so David is so appreciative of all that God has done for him over many years. You remember, you know, God has taken David from being just a, a shepherd boy out in the field left behind in many ways and, and just, you know, a nobody. And he's taken David and he's, he's brought him and made him center stage in, in the Bible as a man who we remember and we revere, as a man who God said, man, that guy had my heart. And so out of appreciation for all that God did for David, David now says, wow, Lord, you've been so good to me. I, I, want to, I want to do something for you. And so I want to say building the house of God comes out of an appreciation for what God has done for us, not a feeling or a need of we have to. In fact, in a Christmas church, we say this. We say, listen, if we're going to do something, let's do it because we've got the I want to, not the I have to. It's like, man, I'm going to go to church not because I have to. I'm going to go to church because I want to. I'm going to get involved and serve in a team, not because I have to. I'm going to do it because out of appreciation of all that God has done in my life, I want to. I'm going to give financially into the work of what God is doing, not because I have to, but because something in me is so appreciative of all that God has done for me. I want to do it. In fact, it's, it's, it's like this. It's the difference between a willing heart and a reluctant heart. And I don't need to ask you this morning which one you think God prefers, a willing heart or a reluctant heart. Come on, we all know it. God's looking for willing hearts. 
And David was willing, David was willing to build God a temple and that was enough for God. God didn't even need him to do it, but because he had an attitude that said, I want to do it, God said, you can relax now, your son is going to do it, but I'm going to bless your household. I'm going to build a legacy for you because of your heart's desire. Let me put it like this. It is an honor to build God's house. It is a privilege to partner with our almighty God. It's a privilege to get involved in the things that he invites us to get involved in. And, uh, you know, from my own life, I have I've always loved God's house, been brought up in it my whole life, uh, but always had a passion to be part of it and, and, and to build it. And as I've done that, God has looked after me uh, so, so much. And, and, and the truth is, God is looking for your heart. He's looking for your heart. And so many of us are so distracted by a plethora of things vying for our attention. But God's looking for our heart. And one of the ways he finds it is when we place it within his house and say, God, this is your house, this is your home. And, and we want to be part of building and developing it. So, so this morning, if you hear me and, and you think, man, I'm, I'm, I'm being forced to do something I don't want to do. I'm being, I'm being requested. No, 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 no. It comes out of a heart of appreciation. Our God has done so much for it. And we appreciate that. Here's the second thing uh, today about building God's house. Is, so the first one is it comes out of an appreciative heart. But the second one is this, uh, building God's house is personal. Building God's house is personal, uh, the opposite being corporate. It's, it's personal, not corporate. Now, David loved God and he, and he loved him so much that in his heart he was aggrieved that God did not have a better place to reside. For, for David, it was personal. For David, it was his heart wanting to do something for God. It was personal to him. And when you think about the house of God and you think about building the house of God, I pray that you approach it from a viewpoint that this is personal, not this is corporate. And often when we think about churches, we may think of organizations and we may think of structures and, and, and we may think of people filling different roles. I don't know, maybe you think of an organizational chart and there's the pastor and then there's all these different things and people making up this thing called the church and you look at it and it's like it's just corporate and it's, it's got a brand to it and it's got a sound to it and it's like, whoa, it's all, it's all a bit hard to get into. But I want to say building God's house is, is not about us connecting to a corporate thing. It's about a personal response to our Lord and Savior. It's personal. It's personal. You know, we say in this church that being part of our church is not just about attendance. You know, you can attend a big church. You can attend a big gathering. You could be attending church online right now, and you could say, well, that's me done. I'm, I'm in, like I'm building God's house. I'm, I'm attending. But, you know, uh, really, uh, if I was to use that metaphor in the theme of our year, step into the flow and the river of God, if you've been watching those messages, really that's just ankle deep. Attending is just ankle deep. But there's so much further that God is encouraging us to go into. In fact, we say there's four things that really kind of secure you in a way into a local family. Number one is serving the vision, serving the vision. So when we're, when we're carrying weight, we're carrying responsibility. When we have a job to do, when we don't turn up and something doesn't get done and we're carrying weight, now we're serving. And, and when we're serving, now it's, that's not corporate, that's personal. That's my, my personal effort and my personal energy that's going into seeing God's house being built. The second one is sowing into the vision. Sowing, so that's a financial contribution. That's, that's the idea that I have to take my place of responsibility in this local group of believers. I've got to do my part, and God gives us some instructions on how we're to do that. 
Now, the third way we say to do that is by praying into the vision. Praying. So we don't just leave the spiritual climate of this church to others. We say, no, I have a responsibility to be part of the solution, part of the answer. So I'm going to pray into the vision. And then the fourth one is this, is that we would connect into the vision. Connect. In other words, we wouldn't just be isolated people, but we would be connected with God's people. Uh, We say it like this, uh, we want to be a church where we are known and we know other people. So I'm known by others. I'm not incognito. I'm known by others and also I know what's happening in other people's lives. That's all about building the house of God. And so here's the really cool thing. I love this. If you will take responsibility for God's house, then God will take responsibility for your house. If you will take responsibility for God's house, and let me put it like this, if you'll take responsibility for God's family, He will take responsibility for your family. Wow, that's cool. That's amazing. I can tell you, I'm, I've, I've got a family, I've got four children, but you know the truth is, I, I really don't worry about them. I really have very, very little worry or concern when it comes to my children. Why? Because God has promised me if I'll put first things first, if I'll look after what He's asked me to look after, then He will take care of my family. And I can tell you, He has been faithful to do that time and time again, year after year after year. In fact, let me tell you this, today I'm walking in the blessing Uh, of what my mom and what my father did for many years. They put God's house as the central theme of their lives. And today, I'm walking in that blessing. But guess what? My children, their grandchildren, are walking in the blessing of God. If we'll put God first, I'm telling you, He will take care of all of the rest. How many of you want to live life like that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? To go through life knowing that, man, I really don't need to worry about money. It's all his anyway. I really don't need to worry about my kids. He's promised to take care of them. I really don't need to worry about all these things that can bother me. No, if I'll make first things first, his kingdom, priority in my life, then God will take care of all the rest. And so wherever you're watching today, how about saying an enormous yes and amen to that incredible spiritual truth. Amen? So good. Well, listen, if you're watching today, maybe you have never said yes to Jesus, and we never want to uh, finish a service without giving people the opportunity to open their hearts to Him. And so if that's you right now, you're watching, and you say, Mark, I really don't have a relationship with Him. That is so simple. Um, I don't want to use the word fix. But it is so easy to move beyond that to a place of assuredness that you do have a relationship with Him. And all you've got to do is invite Him into your heart. You might just want to pray with me right now. Just say, Jesus, I'm asking you, would you come and be part of my life? I'm handing the control of my life over to you. Come and be my Lord. Come and be my Savior. I want to live life your way. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer this morning, we are celebrating with you. Your life is about to change in a big way. We'd love to get in touch with you. We'd love to help you on your next steps of your journey with God. How about watching this video? Take note of what you do next because we want to journey with you. But God bless you guys and I will see you very soon.